after putting up his price that he thought he's being valued to all in that is Mikhail Modric I think last week I even did the story that he is worth 40 million euros obviously the football director or sporting director of Shakhtar Donetsk has come out and dropped a bomb on the real price of Mikhail Modric from Shakhtar Donetsk to any club that is really wanting to gate him in the January transfer window and obviously the most club that have made him a priority is none other than Arsenal. Fabrizio Romano has gone ahead to let us know what the Shakhtar Donetsk manager sorry sporting director has gone ahead to say about Mikhail Modric's deal to Arsenal and how much they want for this player. Then Zinchenko, his fellow countryman of Mikhailo Modric, has come out and spoken all broken silence about his injury that is really healing and he promises to see to it that he really keeps fit because he has been away for a very, very long time at Arsenal. Then he has come out and talked about Gabriel Jesus and his injury that he's undergoing and he has gone ahead to strengthen all Arsenal fans all over the world that keep in one strength and this guy is going to be back stronger and better then lastly Bukayo Saka after being knocked out of the World Cup yesterday by France he has come out and issued a statement that I'm going to come here and present to you and you guys will be reacting to it welcome to Rokani Media Football how are you guys and where you're watching us from this is Rokan David Rokani Media Football is the YouTube channel you are watching us on don't don't forget to go into the lower right bottom corner smash the subscription button and after smashing it hit the notification bell that will enable you get notified every time we upload a video onto this good good channel of ours and it's you who has made it what it is right about now now you know we are left with some subscribers to hit 9000 and guys don't forget to subscribe continue subscribing because the more you subscribe the more we get numbers and the more our community grows now let's talk about this story that is really making rounds on social media on Mokailo Modric Mokailo Modric is really a player that has been linked to Arsenal since the summer of 2022 and he is what he has been one of those players that every Arsenal guy all fan has been asking me about onto this channel that are we going to sign him are we going to bring him on guys today as you know we are getting stories direct from Shakhtar Donetsk from the director Shana has come out and really told us the following as revealed to us by Fabrizio Romano Fabrizio Romano has brought us this so Shakhtar Donetsk, Shakhtar's director known as Hanna, has come out and told us that who wants, to, who wants to sign Modric has to pay big amount of money. Otherwise, our president will not sell him. He told the marker. Then he said Jack British was sold for more than 100 million euros and Modric's level is not lower, he added. One thing I want to, to gate the director of Shakhtar wrong is comparing Michael Modric to to Jack Grealish. You get one. There is a difference between the Premier League and the Ukrainian and the Ukraine League. That's it. However much I believe Modric has a higher ceiling than than Jack Grealish and is a more better skilled player. I don't believe that. You can give that as a reason for signing Mikhail Modric at a hundred million euros like they signed Jack Grealish. Because the moment you put in Jack Grealish in the picture of Mikhail Modric. That means you want the same amount of money from Mikhail Modric. And no team is going to pay that amount of money. No team is going to pay that amount of money. That's why the player said he was pissed off when a deal never matured in the summer. And this time round, he has gone out and hinted out that I want to go to Arsenal close to three times in different interviews on different media houses. And the director is saying that they want a lot of money. That's out. That's out. I believe he's just testing the waters to see what is really up for grabs. How desperate can these teams go in for my player? The fact is, the best amount of money I can go in and pay for Mikhailo Modric is 60 mil. North. North of 60 mil. Nothing else. Nothing else. And that would be even much. 60 million euros. That's the amount of money I would go on and say it's worth Mikhailo Modric. But... Putting him in the same picture with Jack Grealish is out. Trust me, Jack Grealish costed that amount of money. One, he's English. Secondly, Jack Grealish is a kind of player who has gone ahead to tear up the Premier League at Aston Villa. He tore it apart. 
for close to three consecutive seasons, 2019, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2021. And I think that's when he came, and that's when and I think he joined Man City that season. So from 2018, 2019, 2020, 2019, 2020, 2020, 2021, that's when he tore the Premier League apart. And obviously, he was really everywhere. United wanted him, Arsenal wanted him, Chelsea wanted him, Liverpool wanted him, City wanted him. Every top player in the Premier League, every top team in the Premier League wanted him. And this is where he gets it wrong. Mikhail Modric is not wanted by all the top six clubs in the Premier League. That's out. So there is no bidding war that is going to be created in between, in between Mikhail Modric and other teams that really want him. I believe they're overpricing this player. And if at all I were the director of Shakhtar, I would have gone ahead and told us, all right, how much are you willing to give us? 50 million euros, right? All right. Now, let's put in clauses that could see this deal rise up to 80 million euros. I believe that is possible because if Arsenal qualifies for the Champions League, they can get you some money. If Arsenal wins the Premier League, they get you some money. If he scores 20 goals a season, they get you some money. If he wins Arsenal the Champions League, they get you some money. And this is a very good deal to do for Shakhtar because Arsenal is on its high. Sorry, it's on its rise. And on its rise, it's already five points top of the Premier League. And I believe if at all they get this player in early enough, he can help us win the Premier League and wins the Premier League. They can bang in like more 10 million pounds. Like you saw Bruno Fernandes, I told you, Bruno came in at Manchester United. United paid an initial fee of 45 million pounds. But this fee he raised up to 65 million pounds. And I believe Bruno is left with just, I think United is left with just 5 million pounds to really level the agreed amount of fee that is 65 million pounds but that's 15 the 20 the 15 million pounds have already been paid to sporting lisbon because of the performances of bruno fernandez and what he put up on the field of flow when he came in at Manchester united so i believe this director of shakta needs to know that these are this is how deals are done like um doe is to liverpool it is said that the fee could raise up to 100 million euros but Liverpool went, to, went ahead to pay like 60 million euros. There is a balance of 40. When Doe Nunes helps Liverpool win the Premier League, some money will be sent to Benfica. When they win the Champions League, some money will be sent. When he scores 20 goals a season, some money will be sent. So lots of things, lots of things should be included in that contract. It, that it amounts that amount of money. And I believe Mokailo Mo Mo Modric, needs to get an agent who knows this business. Like you've seen George Mendes mediating very many deals of players that he does not even manage. He mediated a deal of Doe Nunes from Benfica to Liverpool. He was not the agent of Doe Nunes. He negotiated the deal of Fabio, Fabio Vieira from FC Porto to Arsenal. He's not the agent of, of Fabio Vieira. You get he negotiated the deal of Bruno Fernandes from Sporting Lisbon to Manchester United is not the agent and most of the players coming out of Portugal have used him alone to negotiate these deals and I believe Mikhailo Modric should get a very good a very good agent who can negotiate a deal with Shakhtar and ask him to see that the deal comes to materialization but Fabrizio Romano has brought us this story and remember he told us that he that Arsenal have gone ahead to make Mikhailo Modric their priority signing and obviously I believe the president is Sorry, the president and the director of Shakhtar are talking at the naive side of view. That's it. Naivety is full of their head. And they, are, they first compared him with Neymar and Mbappe. And now they're comparing him with Grealish. But can you put Neymar and Mbappe in the same bracket with Grealish? No way. Even if it's the amount of money they are bought. Grealish went in for 100. Neymar went in for 200. And Mbappe went in for 197. You remember that very well. So, no way, even when it comes to talent, Kylian Mbappe and Neymar are at different levels. And I believe talent-wise, Mikhailo Modric is at a different level with Jack Grealish. That's it. But I believe if they go ahead and make a very good deal with Arsenal, they can even get 100 million euros from this guy. That's it. They can. They can. They can even put out a percentage on the sale of this player because the player has a very high ceiling of his career. Very talented. Ukraine Neymar. And I believe something has to go on and be put in place to see to it that they don't miss out a deal of this guy because if he doesn't come to Arsenal in January, 
there might be huge chances that Arsenal will go in for another developing talent. You know, Arsenal wants to go in for Leroy Sen, they want Pedro Neto, and if at all they don't get Mikhail Modric now, I believe it's going to be bad for that deal to happen, unless otherwise Mikhail Modric goes up in the UEFA Europa League and tears it apart. That's it. If he goes ahead and keeps that form in the in the UEFA Europa League constant, then very many clubs will keep tabs on him. That's it. And remember, the reason as to why they are bragging and talking like this, it's because Mikhailo Modric played well into the Champions League, scoring close to three goals and four assists in six games. Obviously, he was really one of the best players for Shakhtar Donetsk into that competition. And I saw him really tearing up teams like Real Madrid, RB Leipzig, and very many others. So that's the update coming in from Shakhtar Donetsk. The director has come out and really said it again that they need huge money. If you are going in for this player, you must be able to go on and really pay huge money. All right, let's go to his countrymen. That is Zinchenko is also coming in from Ukraine. Obviously, we have been told by Zinchenko the following because he has been disturbed by injuries ever since he came in at Arsenal. He first played how many games? He played against Crystal Palace. He played against. Uh, he played against Leicester City. Then he went ahead to play against Bournemouth, <laughs> and I think. Those are the three games he played. Then he never played the game of Fulham, Aston Villa. Uh, then he he went ahead and missed a game. The second game he missed again. Obviously, he returned on the game of Manchester United, where United beat Arsenal by three goals to one at Old Trafford. Then Zichenko went back to injury and returned back when Arsenal was playing. Is it Brentford? So he has been on and off and his consistency has not been maintained at Arsenal because of his injuries. Now, Zinchenko has gone ahead and talked to Sky Sports and this is what he really had to say about his injuries that are really recurring and he's so much pissed about them. But an assurance to Arsenal fans have been issued that he's back to field fitness. Zinchenko said, you know, I have a little muscle tightness but I'm nearly there so don't worry about this. Obviously, I'm also working hard to get my fitness back to be with the team as quick as possible. So he has gone ahead and answered all your questions, all those that we are really asking for his whereabouts in that game of Arsenal versus Lyon. Obviously, he has gone ahead to tell you that he's having a little muscle tightness, but he is nearly there. And obviously, he has promised to come back big and better, and that is Zichenko. Then he continued to say that it's the worst feeling, to be fair. For every footballer to be out of the team and yeah in the last couple of months i was struggling a lot but i hope everything in the past is in the past already and now i'm fully focused and so excited for the rest of the season that is alexander zichenko the new signing of arsenal from man city that has so far played some good games for arsenal and has been pivotal in their being on top of the table so when you look at alexander zichenko he's one of those players that you wouldn't like to get injured one he has that never say die attitude. The way he pushes up his team when they are really behind or trying to go on and really win a game of football, he's really great. Memorably, the last game they played in the Premier League on the 13th, I think was, they played on the 12th of November, it was against Wolves, Wolves. And you remember that second goal that came in through, his cross that he put in, it was like a cutback that resulted into Odegaard scoring his second goal of the day. You saw how good this player is. He is so much technically gifted. Even when the likes of Kyle Walker was, were asked well still at Man City, who is the most skilled player? Who is the most skilled player in training of Man City? He came out and said, Zinchenko and everyone was shocked because they thought that maybe he was going to say Kevin De Bruyne, Riyad Mahrez, you get those set of players. But he said no, Zinchenko is the most skilled player in the training of Man City. So this player is different and having a winning mentality that has been built in him at Man City for theirs has been there. I think it's one of those that is driving him forward, but he has been away and is promising Arsenal fans that I'm really going to be here for you to get things done for you because you deserve the best from 
me and I'm going to go on and read with the info. Let's wait and see whether he makes it back in the game of AC Milan that Arsenal is going to be playing on Tuesday. And I think today I'm going to come up with a match preview of Arsenal versus AC Milan. Remember, the likes of Thomas Partey are back, Tana and um, Ben White. They are back in the training of Arsenal. And obviously, you know what that means. Arsenal looks like is fully fit to see to it that the squad find itself in shape to come back and fight for the Premier League. Now, then Zichenko has gone ahead and really hint out onto the injury of Gabriel Jesus. In his own words, he said, I said already that we are all behind him. We are all supporting him. Of course, it's a big miss for our team and the impact what he's going to do for the club is amazing. That's it. You see, Zinchenko is one of the friends of Gabriel Jesus and obviously they've been together at Man City, now together at Arsenal. They're the reason as to why Man City threw in an, an investigation why Pep Guardiola sold these two players to Arsenal because Arsenal is topping and leading the league. So it shows you that these two players are really important for Arsenal and have gone ahead to cause mishaim, to cause mayhem at Man City, something that you wouldn't even expect that Man City could go ahead and really put out a statement to Pep Guardiola that never and never sell any top-class player to Arsenal. Obviously, they sold them to Arsenal not knowing that Arsenal has really reached a level of competing with them at all for the title in the Premier League. And obviously, Arsenal is giving them a chance for the title. So, these two players have done a great job for Mikel Arteta. Obviously, the winning mentality, the experience that they are holding as a team is one of the things that they will never, never at any one moment take for granted. And obviously, he's telling us that this player is going to come back and he has been an impactful player at the club. And he concluded the following on Jesus. He said, I know him, that is Jesus, for a while. He's a big warrior and I'm 100% sure that he will be back much, much stronger. And when you look at Zinchenko, he knows Jesus. To me, Jesus is a warrior. He's a fighter. However good and talented he is, he has a very good skill set, but that energy he puts up on the field of play, he shows you how much he's ready to die for the club of Arsenal. That was very much evidence when Arsenal was playing Liverpool. You remember it very well when the man got a concussion, but later said, I'm returning on the field of play because he knew the magnitude of game that Arsenal was playing and the players on the field of play could not handle it. And it's because of his foul in the penalty area that Liverpool considered the penalty. Saka takes it, and obviously they win the game of football. You get, he risked himself, and obviously returned to the field of play. So this guy is a warrior, and Zinchenko is telling us that this man is going to return back big and better. After that, yesterday, England was knocked out of the World Cup. Bukayo Saka, one of the Arsenal players, was really pissed and known and not believed that they are out and obviously has gone ahead to put out a writing on his Instagram and I said this should sum up this video today. He said, I can't explain how I feel today but we gave everything out there and we really wish we could, we could have brought it home for you all this time. I just wanted to say again thank you to our fans. You've been both amazing at the home, sorry at the games and the home this tournament and we felt it. He concluded by saying, this group are really special and talented. So although we are disappointed now, I'm really excited for our future. Thank you for my England family, my teammates, Gareth, Gareth, the coaching, the coaching and all the backroom staff for all their hard work and dedication to help us get this far. Obviously, he's talking about how talented they are and how young they are. I believe that this time round, England has a very good, talented squad, provided they get a good manager. That's the problem with them. I believe that yesterday, why bring on Sterling, as I told you in my match reaction, when you're having Rashford, who has been firing in goals, and Sterling has been away for a week, not training. That was a very huge mistake done. They had to leave Saka on the field of play. They had to bring on Rashford to play off the left because that is where he plays best. Then keep keep um, Declan Rice and Bellingham in a pivot. Then get um, Ford to play as a central attacking midfielder ahead of the double pivot of Declan Rice and uh, Bellingham. That's what they're supposed to do. But they never did it and it costed them that much. 
I believe you add you add Rashford with his pace to that team when Bukayo Saka is a field of play and field forward. Obviously, England was going to tear France apart because Kylian Mbappe had been silenced and they were just relying on two moments. And obviously, they created like five shots, three on target, two were in the back of the net, and that's why England was knocked out. But that was poor, 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 poor substitutions made by the English manager, that is Gary Southgate. But talking about the young talent that is having as England, they're having the likes of Bukayo Saka, Phil Foden, Judy Bellingham, Marcus Rashford, Luke Shaw is still young, he can go for some good years. <laughs> they have the likes of James Madison and very many other upcoming talent. If at all Sancho can find himself up and lift up to find himself back into that team, it will be a very good addition to that England national team because they are really doing great and firing in goals for fun. The likes of Tommy Abraham are also young. They can get themselves into the winning. And I believe England need to go on and do the needful and get a better manager. You see, get race James returns into that side plays very well and plays better, I believe they can go on and really win a tournament next World Cup. They will go in when all these players have matured. Rashford will be like 28, 29. Saka will be like 25. Bellingham will be 24. Mm, Foden will be like 25. So they would have matured to levels of going ahead and winning the tournament. And maybe this would have been a foundation ground laid by England to see to it that they win the next tournament and learn from their mistakes. So guys, thank you very much for watching in. Rock and David is my name. Feel free to go in the comment section. Tell me what you think about the huge transfer fee for Mikhail Modric. A bomb has been dropped by the director of Shakhtar as far as this guy to Arsenal is concerned. Then your thoughts on Zichenko giving us an update on his injury and in your injury update on to Gabriel Jesus. And later, what do you think about Bukayo Saka's comments? after his team was knocked out of the World Cup yesterday by France. I sign out for now. See you later. Last video of the day, I think at around 10 a.m., mob videos are going to be premiering on this channel. Don't forget to say a prayer before you go to bed, and I hand you over to the Almighty Lord to bless you and watch you over and over again. I'm out. See you tomorrow.